Going on a uh, tree of heaven and other woody invasives. We're getting ready to go do the mix. Cleaning up a little work we did back in the spring. Got a couple autumn olive in the prairie to hit. So we're gonna do 25 ounces of Tricopier 4 and then to make a gallon of mix using diesel. And we've already read the specs. He has to have gloves and a long shirt and that's about it. Boots and socks. And some boots and socks. That's what socks. And this is for basically woody brows that's invasive. Yeah, brush. It's a brush killer more or less. So it'll kill anything basically that's woody. It will not kill grasses, but okay. the diesel will probably kill grass. Okay, and the diesel is only a, something for it to stick like a surfactant. Yeah. It allows it to soak through the bark. So we had 16 ounces, so then, what, 12? No, 10, 8, 8 ounces. The tree of heaven is invasive. Why? What's it? What's it actually do in the forest? So not only does it outcompete all the native trees, if you cut it, it spreads like crazy, and it has chemicals in the root system. Basically, all the plant has chemicals to where it kills, it creates its own environment where only it can grow. So at some point, when it completely takes over, nothing but grass will grow underneath it. And where's tree of heaven originated? Somewhere in Asia. Okay. Southeast Asia. But it's been here for a while. But the stuff we're dealing with today, I think you cut in the other stand where the goats are. Yes. And then it root sprouted out into the field. And now it's growing out in the beans we saw yesterday. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna make an effort at it. So what about autumn olive and bush honeysuckle? We're gonna hit some of it. Or? Yeah. We'll basically just use this whole tank to whatever target the tree of heaven. Then whatever we got left, just hit the stuff in the prairie and. Okay. Try to knock some stuff back. We should see in a week. Stuff should be dead. Okay. This here is diesel. Diesel's just used to as a surface treatment that where it soaks in, won't wash off away. So what if we have a rain within an hour? Is it already? It's fine. The only thing you don't want to do is spray. It's the opposite, basically. You don't want to spray when it's when the stems are wet. So as long as you don't have like snow on it or just rain, if it rains like in an hour, it's already soaked in. It's oil based, so just the rain will run off. Okay. You actually want it to rain. You don't want it to be a drought. You want the plant to move everything up to its through its roots and leaves. All right. So I'm gonna need help with this one. Okay. But it is like forty dollars for a tub. I want to get it because I don't want to be transporting freaking diesel around. You can go back and get like a far away shot. And just see how aggressive this guy is. This? This is Tree of Heaven. And it is growing out in the field right now. And it was not this bad a year ago. But Ben said I cut it and has a defense mechanism that made it decide to. Uh, propagate so this year's growth already you've got almost three feet of growth three feet of growth just, just this year three months <laughs> wow and it's starting to root sprout out into the bean field so anytime i'm spraying i think it's a good idea to like go in and then work your way back out rather than because you don't want to be brushing up against this stuff once you spray it so i'll probably go in as far as i can and then just back my way and there's a up. wind before you make a difference like the winds to our back right now. Now, because here, I'll, sh I'll show what I'm doing, I guess, here on these little ones. It's just, I mean, we might kill a bean or two here. You don't want a ton of pressure. All you gotta do is just soak that stem. And these little ones are not resilient. Honestly, I like less pressure too, because you want it to just kind of run down. I 
Oh, these are on the little ones, the sprouts. Yeah. So in an ideal world, if we were doing bigger trees, I'd probably wait until like September to do this. But my, my plan is to hit this now and then we come back in that time too and hit, it, hit whatever's still alive or we miss. Because if you hit it in the, the fall, basically you're putting everything back down into the roots. Because this is all just one plant. It's all just grown off one this, root system. This, all this stuff is one plant. Yep. yep. Wow. And this is Tree of Heaven. Stay tuned. We're going to go do some spray. There's a landowner that I work with in Claremont County. They, they have their YouTube channel. They do. And they're like botanists, so they're really... I mean, they're picking garlic mustard and everything. But they have a, some tree heaven videos. And the diesel just helps it stay on there. Yep, the diesel helps it go through the bark. So it's oil-based, so it needs... If you mix it with water, it would just run right off. Here's the height of the tree of heaven. When did you cut this stuff? Two years ago? Yeah, I actually think it was a year ago. There we go, about 10 feet. Yes. 10 feet of growth in a year. And it exploded. Yep. Which is a good testament to... Basically, we're just trying to kill them first, and then... Because this is kind of what you get when you just cut them. But, good thing to know. Don't just cut them, just kill them first, and then they'll friggin' fall within two years, or you cut them down. So how long are we going to notice this kill on these? Oh, I bet. Honestly, because it's growing season, a week you'll see them wilted two weeks they'll be stone dead okay good deal but then I'm, I'm thinking if we come back in august or september and anything we've missed or little ones that have popped up since we just hit those again we should should have a good hold on it so somewhere here i'm gonna hop in try to work my way back out you see i probably missed a lot of little ones but i, I think you just hit things twice that's kind of my theory yeah. Make one good pass and then come back through follow that up in the same growing season this is the original tree of Tree of Heaven that is throwing out the suckers. Was that what you would call these? Yeah. Yep. Suckers, which turn into actual trees. So I cut it, not knowing that it would explode like it did. So Is it taking over right now? How many feet area you reckon it is estimate? I mean, yeah, we probably got a, at least a 40 foot radius around what you cut. So it would turn into a monoculture, correct? <laughs> yeah, quickly. Okay. I mean, you got a bunch of little ones like this popping up, which are, there's probably a bunch of them we can't even see you down here too. In fact, I see a little one right there. Okay. But we're thinking that we don't hit, have to hit all the little ones because it possibly might take it into the root system. We'll see that. Yeah, we're gonna be, try to be as thorough. I think just be as thorough as anything we can see right now. Okay. And then soak the crap out of that big one. Gotcha. At this size. <laughs> Tree of heaven. Yep. So the goal is to get about knee high to the ground all the way around. Now knee high to the ground and it's not proven yet that if he hits this main one it'll kill the rest of the suckers. Not as far as I know. Could test it I assume not hit the ones behind you yeah we could just hit these this patch here and leave everything that way Be yeah a cool little test because if they start to weld over there then heck yeah just hit the big ones <laughs> hit the big ones and you've hit some on the outer bean rows and leave the ones to behind us and if we see no signs on that then you know maybe we'll like you said have to come back in at a later date and hit the ones behind us and we'll know what the test is. Yep. So knee high, try to circle the tree. All the way down to the ground. All the way to the ground. And this is the main tree that I cut and you can see how I cut it. I really didn't know that, you know, I was triggering it. I think that's pretty common. People think, people think it's sumac sometimes. So as you see, 
We have pretty well oil based the whole trunk. He has a few more in the back. Tree having leaves. Really close to the look of a walnut, so you need to kind of know your tree identification. In my hands is an actual walnut, black walnut leaf. Side by side, black walnut leaf real similar but Ben said the identif identifying factor is these little tooth notch tooth right there at the, the base of the limb and on the leaf so that little tooth right there is identified because this the walnut leaf has that he it does not have that tooth that tooth no tooth on the black walnut. This grove that uh, Ben is standing in is actually one tree and all of its sucker sprouts. So now we're going after autumn olive. Pretty easy to identify. It's got a silvery underside and kind of orange stems. Same concept, just soak it. From what I've seen, this stuff's pretty weak. Autumn olive. You got that new growth, it's got, this year's growth is orange with little dots on it. It stands out pretty good in the winter. Well, we got like four or five inches of growth this year. Yeah, please. <laughs> it's moving its way out to the field. This is a waterway in the field, and it's deciding it's going to come on out here in it. Basically, drench the stem. Mm -hmm. On these little ones, I don't really try to hit them all the way around. I just try to put enough on there that it runs off the backside. This patch hasn't been there really long. I just evidently have not got into it it's one of those the bush hog didn't get yep because it's too close to the fence without tearing the fence out autumn olive there this is bush honeysuckle very invasive also this is in our uh, little habitat area that we cut out this year so he's going to spray it also. Now what's the name of this product? This is called, so the chemical is triclopyr 4. Triclopyr 4, which the 4 is the oil based kind. Um, I think triclopyr ester. Now right now we've got, as you can tell, a slight wind. But there's no mist because he's just got it barely drippage in on it. Yeah, I don't like a lot of pressure with this thing. So the goal is just to... Just to let it run right off. So you're, so, not, you're not impacting any other trees. Yep. And what Mike and I were just talking about is coming through here. The nice thing is you can use this. It's oil-based. You can use it in the winter. And if you imagine walking through here in the winter, it'd be a lot easier to pick out. You know what you're identifying. It'd be a lot easier to pick out these little honeysuckle and autumn olive and target those. You're not going to kill the grass and the stuff around it because it's dormant. So you only kill really woody stuff that time of year as long as you're still pretty selective. Um, you can make huge ground on killing shrubs. It's a nice little so brush Ben pump. does know his stuff because he is a uh, forester <laughs> by trade. Yep. So this is the last few shots of the video. We're going to go out here in this there is prairie in here, prairie grass, and uh, we have walnuts and such that are, are starting to come in, can't be uh, took care of with the bush hogs. So this last part of the video, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hit hit this little walnut patch and uh, this will be it walnuts are not really invasive but we really don't want them in the prairie this here is a soaking shot this is how it needs to be applied. 
doing a quick follow-up uh, this here is the stand of uh, tree of heaven you can this is exactly one week a lot of the suckers uh, that are still coming up or still wilting down and dying it's pretty put a pretty good kill on them the, the green back here those green right there those are actually two walnuts so those we never hit and still alive let's follow up on the uh, invasive tree of heaven and like I said that was a basil uh, applicant right there is the uh, Russian olive and it's toasted also so we got a good kill on the invasive bush tree species so on up here also is another one quick acting if you can get it in there and do it you can get them killed thanks for watching